Hey guys, I'm Tejasvi. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we'll be making a unicorn cake. So it's my daughter Sarana's third birthday and she's told me very clearly I want a unicorn cake and her wish is my command. Let's get started. We're going to begin by making an eggless sponge cake recipe. It's a very simple recipe. Everything goes into one bowl. All we have to do is mix all the ingredients together and that's how easy this cake is. So, I'm going to start by taking a bowl of curd. I'm using natural yogurt here. You can use the one that you make at home or you can use one a store bought one however you like. I'm just going to take the curd and add it to my bowl. Let me just break this up so there aren't any lumps. I'm going to add the sugar now. I'm using caster sugar, not granular sugar or icing sugar, caster sugar. Because I have to make three cakes, that's why there's that much sugar going in. Um, I will link the recipe below. So the sugar and curd mixture look ready. This is when I can start adding my dry ingredients. Um, I'm going to start by adding all-purpose flour, maida. I'll be adding almond flour next. If you can't find almond flour, you can substitute the same amount with all-purpose flour. That goes in. The last dry ingredient that I'll be adding is baking soda. Now, one thing you all must know about adding baking soda to any recipe is that it activates only once it comes in contact with anything acidic. Curd is the acidic element here in our cake. So as soon as I add this in, I need to really be as quick as I can to stir everything in and put it, put this cake in the oven as soon as I can. So I'll start with the baking soda. And now I can begin to stir everything properly. This step does require a little bit of arm strength. But hey, I did eat a good breakfast before shooting this video for you all. At this point, your batter will look a little tight, but don't worry, we still have to add our vegetable oil to make the consistency just right and what we're looking for. So yeah, once your batter looks like this, I'm going to start adding vanilla. I'm using good quality vanilla extract, but if you want, you can even add some almond essence, some rose extract, you can, again, the list is endless of the kind of extracts and essence that you can put in this cake. So yeah, I'm going to start by adding vanilla. There goes my vanilla and last ingredient to go in is vegetable oil. Please use any neutral oil. I'm using vegetable oil. You can use any other oil that you wish to. And that's it. I'm going to give this one last mix and get um, everything together, combine all the ingredients together till I get dropping consistency. Whisk, 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 whisk away. And that's it. So a quick tip that I want to give you all is when to stop. It's very important to know when to stop because if you keep over beating and over mixing your cake, your cake's going to be really dense and you don't want that. You want a nice, light, airy sponge. So once you see that all the ingredients have combined nicely, you can ditch the whisk and give it a last finishing touch with your spatula. So I'm just going to run my spatula along the sides of the bowl, bring all the batter in and just fold it in one last time and yeah that's done dropping consistency i can now start pouring this into 
three half kg ring molds which I have simply brushed with a little bit of oil and dusted with some flour, maida and uh, dusted off all the excess maida. I'm just dividing this batter into three ring molds, um, eyeballing it. So yeah. Don't forget that this cake will rise. So never fill up your mold till the top. With the help of a palette knife or the back of a spoon or the same spatula that you were using to uh, fold in your batter, just coax the batter gently towards the... Oh my god, I was dying to say that. Coax the batter gently. <laughs> just coax the batter gently towards the edge of the mold. So just tap your tray once or twice just to get rid of any unnecessary air bubbles. This is ready to now go into a preheated oven, 170 degrees and it will bake for about 25 to 30 minutes. You will have to check it with a skewer once. If your skewer or toothpick comes out clean, your cake's done. While my cakes are in the oven, I'm going to start by showing you all how to make raspberry compote. I love making compotes of different types using frozen or fresh fruits. I will be filling this cake with dark chocolate ganache and raspberry compote. I feel like the combination of the two goes so well together. Um, let's get started. So, I'll take frozen raspberries and add them to a pot. Just tumble them in. Caster sugar. Once you've added the caster sugar on top of frozen raspberries, you can turn on the induction plate or your hob at home. We have to cook this mixture till it comes to a boil and reduces and becomes slightly thicker in consistency. Also, just to ensure that you don't end up burning it because it can stick to the bottom of the pan really quickly, uh, please ensure that you've got a low flame on. This doesn't take too much time to make, um, so you can make this at home. However, if you can't find uh, frozen raspberries, please feel free to use jam or any kind of marmalade or preserve that you can find. If you don't like raspberry, use strawberry. Again, it completely depends on you. As soon as this comes to a boil, I can stop because as it cools down, this will continue to thicken. So this is now boiling. At this point, I'm going to stop. And I can pour this in to a container or a bowl. I have to let this cool completely before I can use it. And yeah, this is how simple it is. So my raspberry compote is ready and it looks quite nice. I like the consistency. It's not too thick, it's not too thin, just what I need. Um, I also made buttercream and chocolate ganache yesterday. So if you want to see how to make them, just click on the link here and you'll get the recipes for these two. The cakes are also out of the oven. They've been cooling on a wire rack for almost 30 to 45 minutes now. Uh, and they look really good. I like, that, I like the fact that they um, don't require a lot of evening out. The surface looks okay. However, I will be dividing each sponge into two. So I will be cutting it in the center. We'll have six sponges in total to layer it up really nicely. Let's get started. Cutting this cake is really, really easy. You don't need to do much. If you know how to cut a slice of bread from a loaf, you can do this. It's literally that easy. So I'm just cutting it as evenly as possible, making an outline around the cake and then just slicing it up in one shot. One swift move. All my cakes are cut now. I have six sponges 
let's start assembling them now layering it up nicely take a piping bag piping tip round tip place it inside twist the piping bag and push it into the piping tip so that it secures the filling from falling out and this is where my filling will go i'm just going to cut the end i'm filling one piping bag with ganache and the other one with butter cream push it down and just loosen it up slightly chocolate sets very quickly so if your ganache is lying outside for some time even in room temperature it will start setting so just kind of smush it about and start piping let's start piping so just make an outline all around add a little bit of ganache not much take an offset spatula and start spreading this now i'm just going to spread my raspberry compote please be as generous as you want to place the other sponge on top press it down slightly and repeat the same step So I've assembled all the six layers and the cake looks fine right now to me. Um what I've done is I've added some buttercream to my piping bag and I'm going to crumb coat it. So this may look a little messy, but it's okay because a final coat is yet to come on top. Remember that. So my cake is out of the fridge and I'm pretty happy with the way it looks right now. It's been crumb coated twice. Um I will now start the final layer. It's important to keep the scraper as straight as possible. To make a unicorn horn, we're going to roll out a piece of white fondant and keep it thin from one side and thick from the other. I've just got a wet skewer here and I'm going to wrap it around this. So my horn is done and I'm going to leave this one out to set because it needs at least one hour to set. I made another one uh, earlier. Now it's time to make the ears for the unicorn. I'm rolling out a piece of fondant, white fondant on a silk pad. Don't make it too thin, otherwise it's going to be difficult for it to for them to stand. I have these two really cute uh cutters for leaves actually i have a big one and i have a slightly smaller one so i need two of each two of the big ones i'm going to color these gold i have edible gold dust here which i've mixed with a little bit of clear alcohol so you can use any clear spirit that you have available 
and just paint it on. So we're done with all the elements of this cake. I've divided the leftover buttercream into three bowls, actually two bowls and a piping bag. I've got green color, blue color, and pink color. And we've also got our fondant uh, accessories ready. Let's start decorating. So Sarana's birthday cake is ready. I hope she likes it. I hope you liked it. And if you did, please give this video a big thumbs up. Share, comment and subscribe to my channel. And see you soon. Okay, come on. Yes. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Yes. Happy birthday dear Sarana. Happy birthday to you! Yeah. <laughs> that was a big fight.